Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of the Absolutely Not Podcast. I'm your host, Heather McMahon. How the hell are you? When this comes out, it will be uh, moments before. Moments before I am on the stage at Radio City, let me tell you what, my tits are hot, my legs are loose, the core is supported, and your girl's ready to bring the heat and giggles to the NYC. Can't believe it's happening. Cannot believe it's happening, but we're doing it, and I couldn't do it without y'all, and I'm so grateful for each and every one of you who bought tickets, who bought flights, who bought you know, drugs, whatever you have brought. Um, I am I am very honored, and I'm excited. And you know, this time around, I'll tell you what, I, I, I'm going to... I'm going to bring you in on a little inside scoop of how overwhelmed I felt before one of the shows in New York on the last tour. I had done a photo shoot that day and and like I had a bunch of friends and family coming to the show and I just kind of like lost my shit. Like I fully had to take half a trazodone before the show because um, I, I had a panic attack. I got completely overwhelmed. And you know, it's interesting on this leg of the tour or just this tour in general, I feel like I'm like comfortable in my skin. I feel like I'm in the zone, in the pocket, dialed in. And so personally, one of the things that I've had a real like honest conversation with myself about is um, being in the moment. You know, I say it all the time. I say it on stage, be present, be pleasant. And it's um, it's been a little bit of a, I don't know, I wouldn't say, it's been a challenge for me. Let's put it that way. You know, because constantly in showbiz, you're like, what's the next thing? When am I posting next? When am I doing this? It's like creatively, you're just constantly just literally barfing. You're sweating and barfing shit all the time to keep up with everybody else. And I just had this moment the other day. I said, I I literally like an old school, you know, I, I think this was on one of those posters, you know, in the computer lab. You know, they used to have those posters that would have like a random mountain in the background and it would just be like, uh, procrastination will eventually make your stepfather kill himself. You know what I mean? (laughs) You know what I'm talking about? There's like weird motivational posters that when you really took a second and you looked at them, you're like, that's fucked up. You know what I mean? So it's like, make goals or else you'll end up living in your mom's basement and addicted to meth. They didn't really say that. It would just say like, it would have like a basketball hoop and it's like, make goals so that you can achieve them. That's what they really said. But in my mind, because I was a fucked up, you know, nine-year-old in the computer lab just tinkering away, typing as fast as I could be because I knew that I would make a great executive assistant slash secretary one day. Um, You know, she believed she could, so she did. Uh, But in my mind, I would see those. I would see those random motivational posters in the all over school that had like a waterfall. And it would say like, you know, wisdom trickles down from the older people who have lived it. And I would just, <laughs> in my mind, I'd rewrite it. Like, find a man who lives under a bridge because guess what? He's seen some shit. Like, that, that's, if I could rewrite those, that's what I would say. That's how fucked up my brain is. But in a good way, right? That's how dark and cynical I was as a kid. And that's, that's I'm, <laughs> all of this to say, let me have one sincere moment. All of that to say. I thought of the phrase the other day, comparison is the thief of joy. And it is so fucking true. Even though I'm about to do Radio City, the biggest moment in my career, the biggest moment in my life, I am still looking at other comedians. I'm like, why am I not posting as much as them? Why am I not doing this? Why am I not doing three nights at Radio City? Why am I, I know I'm doing Vegas at the wind, but I should have a residency there. Like it is started to make, it can make you go fucking cuckoo and it can make you feel insane. And this business is sickening and it's just next, 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 next. And I had, I was driving in my least Audi the other day and I was listening to, I was listening to Little Karma by Taylor Swift. Karma is my boyfriend. You know what I mean? I'm trying to dial in. I'm trying to listen to the beautiful lyricism of of T Swift. And I just said, you know what? Karma is a relaxing thought. Karma is having a cat sit on my lap and purr because it loves me. And I was sitting on my back porch with the day off with my two dogs. And we were all just having a glass of rose. And I looked at him. I said, this is it. I am, I, this is my joy and I'm going to enjoy it and I'm going to go into Radio City and I'm going to touch the walls. I'm going to take a minute and just smell the curtain and I'm sure the stagehands are going to be like, you know, is it, are you sure this woman's performing here? Okay. Because it seems like she's trying to have sex with the curtain. Did you ever see that TLC show that was like, um, oh God, what the fuck was the name of that show? Where there were basically, there was a guy who like had sex with his Corvette 
and there was a woman who thought she was dating the Eiffel Tower. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then you're clearly not on my level when it comes to trash TV. But that's how excited I am to even be allowed in that building. And um, and I'm sure somebody who's working there who does not know who I am, because I'm not necessarily a household name just yet, is going to be like, why is this woman... Um, She's been she's been lurking in the lobby, just licking the carpet on the stairs. And it's getting weird. You know what I mean? It's getting real weird. And that's just because this is, I'm excited. This is my Super Bowl. But you know what I'm going to do? Instead of getting overwhelmed by all the people that I have to impress, like the last time I went to New York, I'm doing this for me. This is going to be for me. I'm going to go in there. I'm going to, we've got a lot of surprises. It's going to be a show like you've never seen before. Okay. And um, I'm going in there and I'm doing this for me. Selfishly, of course, I'm going to give you a great show. But I was like, I'm going to go in there and I don't have to prove to anybody but myself that I can do it. And I don't know if you're in this place in your life right now where you feel like you're not doing enough and it's got to be here and do there. And even though the lights are on you and you're running your business and you're doing this shit, you still feel like you're not doing enough. Do not let the art of comparison is the thief of joy. Do not do it. Do not compare yourself to the next person who's on the Etsy's. Do not compare yourself to the next mom who shows up to the soccer game and has 65 homemade Rice Krispies. Guess what? You've got a Costco card, Michelle, and you fucking tore it up. You tore that bitch up. You brought a plethora. You brought a spread of snicks. Snicks? Snacks and knickknacks for the children. So while they're only bringing one thing, yeah, is it homemade? Oh, great. Great, you learn how to make fondant, fondant icing. Because you have time on your hands. Well, the rest of us are out there hustling. Some of us are sitting at the Cleveland airport. So we don't have time to make 45 TikToks, pranking our husbands. You know, I'd love to do some more time. I'd love to have some time to do TikToks, pranking Jeff. But you know where he is? I don't know, missing. He's never home. So I got to probably put a tracker on him. Mm, I'm already thirsty. But anyways, I just wanted to share, take you behind the curtain, if you will. <laughs> Look at that show biz. Uh, but I really had a moment with myself the other day. I was driving in the car. You know, I, I, I'm loving these days off where I'm driving in the least Audi and I'm singing and I'm just like, I have had to really have a moment of I'm, I'm doing this for myself and, and I'm doing it to bring joy to people. That is my job. But um, <laughs> also, y'all, I was watching. I, I can only be serious for 30 seconds because I was watching these TikToks and I don't know how the fuck I got on like men's, men's sales, men, men salesmen, man salesmen. I don't even know. It's like motivational salesman TikTok. There's this like jacked up military guy and he is screaming at these young men, not even young. These guys, it's all ages, 20s to 40s. And I just keep getting this guy's motivational sales videos over and over on TikTok. And he is screaming at these guys. He's like, when you're out selling door to door and you go home at six because the sun's gone down and everybody else is waiting for their wife to make a meal, I'm out there till midnight. I do 600 more, more you know, sales calls than you do because you went home to eat. I'm like, well, okay, that's, that's ridiculous. Everyone, you know, that guy's blood sugar's probably low. You know what I mean? He probably needed a snack. Need a little self-care time. And this guy, just these people pay money to go to these motivational seminars for sales. I don't know if, it, if it's like a male MLM. I don't know what kind of like pyramid scheme or if this guy is just, that's his shtick, that he does motivational sales pitches. But it's like, oh, you have six broken legs? Guess what? Crawl on your knees. Crawl on your knees through the neighborhood of Glendale, California. And you bang on the door of all those Persian people and you say, are you going to buy this software or not? And it's just like enough. Like at some point we have to say enough. I rise and grind. I hustle hard. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get really fucked up after that show in Radio City. I'm going to let my hair down. Mama's going to be fun again. I'm going to be letting this weave just hit in the face. Just I'm going to hit you in the face with it. I'm going to have 65 street hot dogs, obviously after the show, because I'm not trying to have the doo-doos during the show. You know, I might drink a couple different alcoholic beverages. You know what I mean? I might mix it up. I might hang over on purpose. No, I, I definitely don't want to do that. I will for sure take hydration tabs and like 65 Advil before I go to bed. But all I'm saying is I'm going to be in the present. And I think whatever you're going through this summer, I know everybody's, it's just this weird grind time. Grind. 
Oh, you're going to go to bed at eight because you need to because you're having heart heart problems. Well, I'm up till midnight and then I get up at 345 in the morning and I do seven hours of CrossFit. I've answered 27,000 emails. I do a cold plunge and then I beat my own dick in with a wiffle ball bat just because I remind myself looking in the mirror, I'm a little baby back bitch. And after I've done seven lashings of a, with a wiffle ball bat to my own dong, then I shake my dick off. And then I tell my wife, where's my, where's my breakfast? And then I go out and I make 6,000 sales calls. And that is why I have enough money for a Lamborghini. What the fuck do you do? And I'm just like, I have been on tour since August. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to play Radio City, sir. That's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to be in the moment. You know what I mean? Fuck, fuck everybody. No, I'm just kidding. Please, I, I'm not saying that. Get your tickets at heatherontour.com. <laughs> but it's true. We just put all this pressure. You know, I see everybody else. Oh, every, and I got interviewed recently and they're like, when are you going to do Madison Square Garden? And I go, soon, bitch. Can a bitch do Radio City? Yes, I'm hoping in a couple years we're doing that. I'd love to be. I mean, I know Amy Schumer did it. I'm, I'm next. You know what? It is a full circle moment for me. And if I ever got to meet Chelsea Handler, I would tell her this. I was third row at Radio City seeing Chelsea Handler perform on one of her first giant theater tours. This was probably, honestly, t t 11 years ago. And my friend Olivia, shout out to Olivia Mulkin, took me. And we sat third row. And we went and had drinks beforehand. And Chelsea was so great. And I remember Olivia saying, you're going to be up there one day. And I looked at Olivia and I said, you know what, bitch? I think you're right. You know what I'm saying? And then another time I've been at Radio City is my third date with Jeff Daniels, my now husband. And we went to that. We were seeing Cirque du Soleil at Radio City. And I remember, I remember it like yesterday. It was like a warm September evening. And I was wearing a jean jacket, like a really cute dress. And we walked from my apartment in Hell's Kitchen. And we stopped at this place called Grand Szechuan, okay? Some of the best, absolute best Chinese food in the city, period. And we stopped at Grand Szechuan because uh, Jeff and I, you know, we love to, we love, we love all sorts of different types of cuisine. I was like, damn, I want soup dumplings. So we stopped at Grand Szechuan. And my husband, who we were only three dates in at the time, put enough chili oil on four dumplings to set to set an entire Chinese village on fire, okay? It was too much. And I remember thinking as he was putting it on, I was like, this guy's definitely not trying. He's either A, so comfortable with me, like he knows that this is it, this is love, we're gonna get married because he is not trying to impress me right now. He's either not into me or just not as so comfortable around me. And he he just kept piling on the chili oil and I was like, this is not gonna end well. We woofed down, he didn't say three words to me at dinner. We woofed down the uh, soup dumplings. We walked four blocks to Radio City. And we're about to sit in our seats. And he's like, ooh, uh, and I could just see it. I knew he was about to have diarrhea. I knew it had hit him. I knew it had hit him. And he went downstairs. But he'd, we had already sat in the seats. You know when you sit in the seats and, uh, you know, they have the pre-show going on. So you kind of, hi, how are you? You say hi to the people around you. Nice older lady next to me, I think from Connecticut. So Jeff gets up. I got to go to the bathroom. Oh, yeah, you know, do your thing. He was sweaty, though. It didn't look good. He went downstairs. He came back up right before the show was about to start. And if you've ever been to a, th a real good theater, you know, they play the ding, ding, ding. Ladies and gentlemen, the show is about to begin. Please silence all cell phones and make your way to your seats. Enjoy the show. That, I need you to know that that, one, that, that sound, it gets me so horny, you have no idea. Ding, ding, ding. Ladies and gentlemen, your tits are about to be on fire because this show that Heather McMahon is about to bring you is going to be so fucking good, you don't even know what's hit you. Like, that's it. That's what I've envisioned my entire life. Just that ding, ding, ding. So I'm already in my seat, horned up, ready to go. And Jeff's got to go to the bathroom again. And I'm like, are you good? And he goes, he's like, oh, you know, the shoop dumplings. <laughs> and it goes down. Comes back, the show started, we're five minutes in. And you know Cirque du Soleil, you don't miss a second. Things are flying at you. We got people flipping up in the air. You got a lady who's just like disjointed her, her hip flexors. She throws it to an audience member. They throw her leg back. She puts it back in. And then now she's like morphed into a butterfly. Like that's the best way to describe Cirque du Soleil to somebody who hasn't been to a Cirque du Soleil show. 
So anyways, this so Jeff is back and forth from the bathroom. And then finally, he's just gone. He misses the first 30 minutes of the show. He comes back, sits in the seat, and then leaves again. And the sweet lady next to me, and he doesn't come back for the rest of the show, okay? The sweet lady next to me leans over and she goes, sweetheart, I don't think he's coming back. And I turned to her and I said, you know what? I think you're right. And she and I laughed our asses off. She thought that he had bailed on the date. But I knew that this was my soulmate just ripping it up, just tearing up the Radio City bathrooms. And then the show is over. Jeff is waiting for me outside. He didn't even get to come back in. And I said, are you good? And he goes, no. I have been essentially bleeding out of my asshole for the last 90 minutes. My apartment was about six blocks west. He said, can I have your keys? I got to go. So I said, run. And I just see Jeff take off across. Take, we're on like 54th. He just takes off. Dead sprint. Never seen the man do a sprint in his life. And he gets to my apartment and I text one of my roommates, Jacqueline. I say, Jacqueline, Jeff's coming up the stairs. He has really bad diarrhea. He completely ruined the entire date because he had no breaks on the, uh, the hot chili oil, the Szechuan chilies. I said, when he comes in the apartment, corner him. Don't let him run to the bathroom. Make him as uncomfortable as possible. And Jeff said that he turned to Jacqueline. He's like, Jacqueline, I don't, you got to go down to the bodega and buy cigarettes. Threw $20 at her and was like, I just need this place alone to myself. And uh, Jacqueline said, he is blowing up the bathroom. We're going to have to call the landlord. And that was the third date with Jeff. So I want you to know that Radio City holds such a special place in my heart. I've seen some of my favorite comedians there. I saw Sebastian. Um, I've seen Chelsea, I, and, and I have my third date with the love of my life. And this new material on the road brings me so much joy because it's raw and real and, and it's about Jeff and marriage and, and, a, and a, you know, we're, we're, we're taking a, a, basically putting what that first year of marriage looks like under a, a microscope. And I'm honest and transparent and tell women from a female perspective what it's like to try and like be the breadwinner and, and <laughs> you know what I mean? Be the, run this shempire. And I want you to know that this all feels so full circle for me. And not on like a downer note, but I also, it just dawned on me today that the, um, that the show is the day before Father's Day. And you know what? I can't think of a more greater gift that I could give myself and my dad. Then just saying, I'm making fun of Jeff <laughs> on stage <laughs> in New York. Um, and then my dad would be laughing his ass off. He'd be like, go harder. Go harder, baby girl. <laughs> so trust and belief. I've tried not to say it out loud. But the fact that, you know, my mom's there. My family's there. I've got my support team around me. But... I am just, it's wild. It's wild. And y'all have been with me since the beginning. And I'm not trying to be like, woe is me. I'm definitely about to start my period. But my dad has not been here to see any of the good shit. He was only here to see me hustling and struggling and grinding (laughs) and going to sales seminars, being like, dad, I went to a Mary Kay seminar. I think I'm going to start selling eyeliner and rouge out of the back of the Jetta. You know what I mean? Like my dad was only here for the hustle and he was only here for like the scary parts of like me not knowing if I'm going to make it. And there's a, you know, when you, when you play the garden or uh, radio city, they run a very cool kind of, we call it like a vanity ad, right? Where it's just an opportunity because you're playing it for you to put your face in Times Square. And so it went live the other day and they were like, most people put up like real quotes from journalists. I put up like one quote from the Hollywood reporter. But I was like, let me just put up fake quotes. Like, she's got sturdy arms, my chiropractor, you know. Um, Never thought I'd see my tits in Times Square, I quoted myself. Uh, And I put a quote from my dad that was like, thank God this comedy career worked out. I was a little scared for a while. And that flashed up in Times Square. My friend sent me a photo of it. And I'm just, God damn it, I'm so grateful. I did not expect to lose my shit. I'm so grateful and I've been so stressed out recently and and you know what I mean just the comparing yourself to other people is the thief of joy 
And I am so joyful. I'm so joyful that how shitty Father's Days are for me. I get to do the coolest thing ever, and I will be so gravely hungover on Father's Day. I won't, <laughs> I won't even think the, about my dead father. I will probably have my head in the toilet or be at Ruby Rosa Pizza just chowing down. But the fact of the matter is, it's a God thing. My dad wasn't here to see me succeed. He only saw me struggle. But it's okay because the best gift that I can give back to my dad is continually, continuing, I can't even talk, um, continuing to um, be grateful in my work, be thankful, work hard, and just do the thing, do the damn thing, and make people laugh. And, you know, I feel like, I've said this before, stay in your lane. Once you figure out something that you're semi-decent at, whether it's making fucking crockpot TikToks, or standing up in front of thousands of people, shaking your tits for cash, and writing giggles, do it. So I don't know. I did not expect to get emo. I am I'm sorry. I am so sorry. <laughs> A little emotionally drained. But uh, anyways, all that to be said, if you needed to hear this as an encouragement in your life, don't let what everybody else is fucking doing. You know, it's like I was getting interviewed for this press shit and they're like, what's next? And I'm like, what's next is I'm going to go shoot another special and I'm going to finish this. Like, I want to live in this moment. What's next is I'm going to eat a fucking slice, a 99 cent slice after the show in a sequin dress and I'm going to black the fuck out. That's what's next, sir. Because I just need to take this in like this weekend, this week. Being in New York, I can't believe it. I am just so grateful. Anyways, I'm going to get off my soapbox, but... The best way that I can honor the people that I love is just to do right by them and to do the damn thing. So, Dad, I know you're up there. I know you're watching. Thank you for telling me to do real estate because it only pushed me to follow comedy harder. <laughs> My dad was like, listen, Heather, you're not making a dime at this comedy thing. When you, I think you could sell mortgages like a son of a bitch. And I was like, yeah, you're right. You know what I mean? You right. <laughs> you right. But anywho, all right, I'm unraveling. I'm unhinged. Let's get into the voicemails. As always, you can call in 800-213-7503. Also want y'all to know, uh, the week after next, so the, the this following week, I'm announcing all the fall tour dates. I'm announcing where we're shooting the next special. Also, if you're wondering, Heather, what happened to the special you shot in October? I am, it's, it's out for sales, but because of the strikes that are going on, we're kind of in a weird spot. So as soon as my attorney gives me the, hey, buddy, let's, let's hit the market. I will be at a Christie's auction going, give me the five, da, 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 give me the seven, give me seven, who wants it? Amazon, da, 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 Netflix, da, 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 you, who wants a Peacock, 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 NBC, 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 can I get a hundred, can I get a, like, I will be on the auctioneer block selling that bitch. But in the meantime, we, I mean, it's ready, it's ready to go. Um, also, all of these episodes are going to be up on YouTube. Y'all, we have the YouTubes, okay? Go to my page, click subscribe. Um, obviously, I can't retroactively take every single episode that I've done, and I've been doing this podcast for three years, and put videos to it, but um, we've been in the studio. I'm in the studio right now. It's going to be up. We're going to slowly start vlogging. <laughs> you know how earlier I was like, you know what? Just be in the moment. You can be in the moment, but you also have to make TikToks, Instagrams. You have to you know, show people your titties on LinkedIn, and then you also got to have YouTube vlogs because it's never enough. Um, I say that also with the joy of my heart that this summer I am okay. Hold on, time out, real quick before we get into, <laughs> before we get into the voicemails. I'm picking up a new hobby this summer. I'm not going to tell y'all. I will reveal it through the vlogs. Um, but I realized that there is one part of my entertainment career that I have not tapped into, and I think you guys are going to be surprised, uh, not surprised, and elated when you see what I plan on doing this summer. I'm going to have to learn from scratch. This is a completely new, you know, set of skills for me, but I'm very excited. And it will be something where you can have me come to your house, come to parties, and show you my skills. I'll take my top off. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to give away too much until I, you know, take my first lesson and just make sure that my acrylic nails won't get in the way of what I'm trying to do. But I just want y'all to know, uh, your girl has a couple tricks up her sleeves. And, uh... <laughs> 
<laughs> it's also just got to be another stream of revenue in case, you know, the entertainment, Hollywood just collapses as a whole and I need to start doing kids bat, mit- bat mitzvahs, bar mitzvahs, you know, wedding receptions. You can figure it out. I, f- I figure you can figure it out. But anyways, everybody who's coming to Radio City, everybody who's come to the other shows on the tour, I am so incredibly grateful. And uh, we'll be announcing all the fall shows and then where we're going to shoot the next special. So every y'all will know as soon as possible what's going on. But anyways, remember, be pleasant, be present. Don't compare yourself to other people. Stay in your fucking lane and just do drugs. I'm kidding. That was that was awful advice. All right, let's get into the voicemails. Let's see what the hell y'all have been up to. You know what I mean? Y'all are unhinged. I bet some of y'all are crying on these damn things. All right, let's get into it. Hey, Heather. It's mm-hmm. Molly calling from Chicago, and I have an absolutely not for you. Okay. So I am a new dog mom to a six-month-old mini Bernadoodle. And at night, we like to give her some CBD to help her with crate training. Mm -hmm. And recently, we acquired a new brand of CBD from the good old state of Colorado, or at this point, I'm thinking a drug cartel. Yeah. She has been immobile for about 24 to 48 hours. <laughs> it's as if she ripped a dad pen 15 times to the snout Yeah, and indulged in an entire bottle of Xanax. So I guess at this point, if anyone in the Chicagoland area is looking for a new puppy as yeah. I'm an unfit dog mom, feel free to call CPS on me. All right, well, love and light. Thanks, Heather. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and say that the amount of y'all that call into the hotlines and incriminate yourself is alarming. Okay, I don't know if you know this, but my sister is the Georgia law lady. She is a criminal defense attorney. So give her a phone call. If you get into something shady, call the Georgia law lady. Again, she would never let me do the ads because she said that I have already... Uh, I, I'm already self-incriminating by doing that ad. But regardless, um, here's the thing. You know, people are so crazy. They're like, well, you know, I just get my my, my chihuahua seven transit down and throw them on a Southwest flight. I I just recently had a little animal shame. So we're, bo- we're taking the dogs to a farm. Not that sounded bad. We're taking them to a boarding farm because I realized Macaroni is now five and a half months old. She needs to be properly trained on the leash. But I realized that Riggs is so reactive on the leash I was like, let's just start from scratch and send them together. So Jeff and I went for a temperament test at this beautiful farm uh, about 40 minutes north of our house. This place is stunning. We roll up and literally I'm like, they're going to be great. Our dogs go to doggy daycare every day. They're all, I, they've never gotten a bad report card. They're so cute. They're well behaved. But here's the problem. It, who's the problem? I'm the problem. It's me. We get out of the car. We roll up to this gorgeous farm. They're there for a temperament test. And then Rigatoni, immediately, he sees one other dog. He hears the joy. He hears the Labradoodles, the Bernadoodles, the, the, you know, the Tibetan doodles. He hears them having a blast, splashing around in the pool. And he says, ah! Ah! at the top of his lungs. These two trainers come around the corner because they think that now a dog's been run over by a car. That I mean, when you hear Rigatoni scream, you automatically are like, this dog's being abused. And they come around the corner and I'm like, no, he's great. This is a sound of joy. <laughs> they looked at me like, you can't control this motherfucker. So they take him in and immediately, like Jeff, my head's hanging low. Jeff is embarrassed. Macaroni's biting someone's toes. And we're like, we're it. 99% of it is my fault. They were so kind. They're like, no. Frenchies, they're like, listen, we're doing a two-week program. We can't guarantee that these Frenchies are going to learn jack shit because you picked the literal, the literal most insane dogs. And I said, I don't care. I love them. I take their little face and I smell their breath. I take my little dog's mouth and I go... And I just, I get high off of it. You know what I mean? If people are like, hey, you want to do Molly this weekend? I'm like, no. Do you got a puppy and I can smell their breath? That's how, that's where I get, get off. It's probably some like deep maternal thing that I'm, my body is craving and aching for a human baby, but I'm not there yet. You know what I mean? Because right now I am (laughs) doing too much. So anywho, um, don't feel bad. Don't feel bad because you went into that store thinking you were getting something for your dog. Also, if you've got like a, what was it? A, a mountain doodle, a mountain Bernadoodle, a, 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 a Bouton, uh, poodle, whatever. Those are big fucking dogs. So uh, it's not your fault. You know what I mean? Every, I hear everybody's just like, oh yeah, I give my dog a Benadryl. I had to give Rigatoni a Benadryl once because he had hives because he got into something. He didn't go down. That dog was, that dog 
that dog, it looked like I had given him bath salts. I rushed him to the emergency vet and they're like, no, he just had a reaction to Benadryl. You did the right thing. But that dog's fucking crazy. He was in his crate, literally like gnawing on the, on the, you know, the, um, the grill on the crate. He's just like, and I, I didn't know what to do. They said, just let him wear it out. He'll eventually wear himself out. So don't feel bad. You know, d definitely call the emergency vet, make sure he's okay. But, um, yeah, I, I mean, I definitely wouldn't buy any dog treats from Colorado. Because you know what I mean? Think about the guys who are making it. They're so high. I don't know when was the last time you went into a dispensary. They're so high. You could hand them fucking Bed Bath & Beyond coupons and they'll think it's cash. You know what I mean? You're like, yo, here's a handful of coupons. And they'd be like, that's what's up, brah. Enjoy that Kiva. Like they don't, I'm not saying, it's a good business, but the people who are really making money are the people who own the dispensaries because they stay not high. The people who are working the nine to five counter are are lit. So I would definitely consult your vet. You know what I mean? I am not a. I don't have a medical degree in um, dogs. However, I did. I did have to. Um, we did have a situation. Rigatoni's penis got stuck, and I had to go to the vet. And she then showed me how to put it back in, and sent me home with a bottle of doggy lube. And she's like, and <laughs> like. Like the barefoot Contessa. And how easy is that? Mm, fabulous. And I'm looking at my doctor, the vet, and I just go, I go, how do you expect me to do this? She's like, it's as easy as that. Mm, fabulous. And um, so now I have to carry around lube, and I've got to take it when I drop them off for camp. I have to take it and say, listen, if his dick gets stuck, just do it. Glove up and lube up. So anyways, that's where I'm at emotionally. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, it comes down to parenting. You're doing the best that you can for your dog. And did you technically drug them? Yes. Did my mom also give me brandy in my bottle when I was a kid? <laughs> sure did. You know, was I was the, I was the kid... Who had a little, uh, I would say, you know, vodka martini rubbed on the gums when I was teething. And I turned out fine. I mean, hello. <laughs> I've got a podcast and um, hopefully doing some nude nude photos this summer. I, I called my publicist and I said, is Maxim doing shit? Like, is Playboy back? Like, I'm ready. Um, and she said they have not returned our calls. But if they want me to take my top off, I am willing to do it. Anyways, be the you today you want to be tomorrow. You're doing the best you can. Hope your dog's okay. Uh, but definitely, yeah, I wouldn't. I also maybe just wouldn't go to a vet in the state of Colorado. Because you know they're going to be high too. So, you know, go somewhere safe like South Dakota. That's, that's going to be a solid salt of the earth. Just, you know, great. I mean, that's far from Colorado, I'm pretty sure. I don't know how far that is, but either way, it's not your fault. Hope the dog's okay. And remember, our moms fucked us up, so your dog expects the exact same from you. Let's get to the next voicemail. Hi, Heather. This is Erica from New York. I am calling because I wanted to say, number one, your Tabitha's full-on takeover episode with Ray has changed my life. Mm. Um, got a family calendar. Every Sunday, we write out what we're doing for the week. I love that. I write down when I have to go to the city. My husband then says, wait a minute. I have a doctor's appointment. My mother-in-law had a stroke. I got to take her to physical therapy. Mm. We had a lot of conflicts happening. Had no clue who was doing what. Have a toddler. She had a birthday party. School full-time. Who's picking her up? Who's dropping her off? Changed my life. I'd love to have an update to see how your Tabitha's takeover has changed your life. Uh, can't wait to listen. Love and light. Looking forward to hearing back. Bye. Listen, I love that. I love that when you call into the podcast, 99% of the time, I'm going to give you horrible advice. But then if you go back and listen to the episode with Ray Tabitha's takeover, just to recap, we um, had a full, basically, uh, we, we had a, Ray came in as a consultant and said that we were running absolutely not production operations to, I would say, um, not even like, we were running the business into the ground, if you will, uh, not even numbers wise. We had a cash flow, but we did not know how to just put shit in a Google Cal. Um, I'm still dealing with issues of people being like, you never read my Google Doc. Didn't know how to open it. Okay. Didn't know how to open it. So I never learned Microsoft Word, Microsoft Office. So everybody fucking lay off me. When I have things to do, I write it on the piece of paper. Okay. 
So here's the deal. What we basically did was we all got together and now we have a fair, shared family calendar. And if I meet a new friend and they want to know what's going on, I can share with them my family calendar. I didn't know how to do this. I plugged this shit in. I am so ADD. I will forget to p- put things in, but now it's all in one place. And I mean, again, that's working smarter, not harder. Hold on. I got to ask the reflux. You know, and everybody got on to me. Oh, it's chaos. It's chaos all the time. But my brain ping pongs back and forth all day long. I'm like, bing, 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 bing. Like, I'm doing a million things. So it is nice to streamline things. You know, my mom is so funny. She can't open any of the calendars on her phone. Like, it's there, but she doesn't know how to do it. So she physically bought one of those huge, like, table calendars. And it's in our laundry room. And she physically writes everything out. And if that works for her, that works for her. But it is great to be able to have everything in one place. Because let me tell you something. Remember the first week of school, okay, especially college. Remember the first week of college. You get so organized. Your binders would be legit. You get your little calendar. I'd always get a year calendar, right? A little thing with the tabs. And you do something for every class. You know, like AP Psych. Bah, right there. So, you know, chem, uh, tap, tap and jazz. I'd have everything. And for the first two weeks, I would keep up with that shit, writing perfectly. You know what I mean? Like Cosmic Sans and Bubble Font. Um, a little cursive, if you will. My motor skills aren't what they used to be. And you used to keep meticulous notes. Chapter meeting, chapter meeting, and you do little hearts around it. And everything was written and it was perfect. And then by the third week of the third hangover, you were like, I don't even know where that that agenda is. Like you would just melt the fuck down. Well, guess what? We live on our phones. We die by our phones. So plug that shit in. As soon as it comes to you, plug that shit in. Share it with your spouse. Share it with your gardener. Share it with, I don't know, you know, the guy who's making your burrito bowls at Chipotle. So he knows, listen, Daryl, I know I usually come in at one, but because I have a late meeting on, on, on Wednesday till two, don't start making that thing till 2010. 2010, that's not that's not a number. 210, you know what I'm saying. Um, I think everybody should have access to your Google Cal. I might start just publicly listing it. So when I don't answer my phone and people start giving me an attitude, check it. You know what I mean? I'm at my I'm at my dog's temperament meeting. And I don't know if they're gonna pass a test. So you know what you should probably do? If you know the temperament test is from 11 to 12, probably don't try calling me back till one, because where am I? At a sports bar, doing what? Chugging Long Island iced teas, okay? Trying to figure out why I put myself in this situation and why I let myself go and failed my own children by not sending them off to camp when they were four months old so they could learn at the most you know, important, impressionable time of their life, which is the beginning, Literally, one of the ladies at the camp was like, how old's Rico Tony? Three? Ugh. And he's a Frenchie? Ugh. She's like, we're going to do our best. I was like, that's all I'm asking for. That's all I'm asking for from everybody around me, period. Just do your best. Do your best. And that's all you can ask of the people in your family. Do your best. But listen, I'm not trying to organize your lives because my life is still a little crazy. It's a little cuckoo. But now that I know, beep, boop, bop, it's in the calendar. I can't be stressed. And then if Jeff fucks up and he's playing golf for too long and I skirt up, I skied up in the white Audi and I'm like, hey, motherfucker, we had, a, we had a dinner and you're on 17, not even finishing up 18 right now. And you'd be like, I didn't know. I'd be like, check the family calendar. And then he'll click there and I'll be like, yeah, see it? Yeah, you're right. Fuck you. I'll meet you at Macaroni Grill. <laughs> you know what I mean? Scared. And I skied out. All I'm saying, it's also nice. You know what they say? Say it, regret it, write it, no, say it, forget it, write it, regret it. So if you want to keep tabs on people, write it down. Put it in the calendar. Let's get to the next voicemail. Hi, Heather. I am one of those hoes that just went to Europe to see our queen, Beyonce, in concert. And absolutely yes to that. Uh, Anyone that can afford to sell a kidney and get tickets in the States, do it because it's absolutely transcendent. I still can't believe it happened to me and that I was that close to Beyonce. Uh, But I also was able to experience some European dick. I always forget about the uncircumcision of it all. And I don't know, maybe I kind of like it. 
So just curious, is it absolutely yes? Is just European dick in general an absolutely yes? Sure is. I mean, here's to all the girls having hot girl summers. Okay, love you so much. Bye. I love that. You know what? We talked about it last week on the podcast. I was reminiscing about having sex on study abroad. And, you know, I was really talking about the way the way Europeans passionately make love. But let's talk about that dick. You know what I mean? It is raw. It's a little stinky. And I don't mean that from an uncircumcision moment. You know what I mean? They're up, they're clean. But if you've ever been to Europe in the summer, it doesn't matter. Everybody's got swamp ass. You know what I mean? Now, what I love about Europeans, they do have bidets everywhere. So that booty is fresh. You know what I mean? And which I really feel like the, the men of America could all really learn a lesson from, you know, just doing a quick swirl around the booty. But uh, I love European dick. You know what I mean? It moves fast. Um, and, you know, and it's, being uncircumcised is kind of fun because it's, it, it'll look different. And then when it gets hard and that little turtle pops out of its shell, it's a surprise. You know what I mean? It's surprise. Uh, how you doing? Some people love uncircumcised penises. I've been with both. Um, I, I don't necessarily have a preference. You know what I mean? I just like European dick in general because, you know, it's hot, but then if they, they, they can go to a bathroom and rinse it off. You know, they can hose that off and you're fresh to death. If you've ever hooked up with a man named Mark after a Braves game at, you know, SunTrust Stadium, it is, it is, it's not great. It's not great. And that's all you need to know about that. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to really air all my dirty laundry, although Mark could have aired the shorts out a little bit, that's for sure. But yeah, European dick's great. Sometimes it's a little salty because you know you've been swimming, swimming in the Mediterranean. Um, they always have nice breath because they eat a nice meze tray. You know, if you're eating somewhere, I don't know, in Greece, you're hooking up with a Greek man. You know, he's got, he's had like a minty mojito. Something's fresh. Uh, yes, there's a lot of garlic in the food, but everything about them is a little fresh. They smell like cigarettes. They smell like a deep, deep, uh, what kind of cologne do they wear in Europe? Who have a lot of them wear? I mean, they do wear the Aqua de Parma. Yeah, they wear the Aqua de Parma, but they just... Oh, Aqua de, Aqua de Gio is it Aqua de Gio. Aqua de Gio, which is... Everybody knows that one. That's from Dolce & Gabbana. I used to wear Dolce & Gabbana light blue. That literally was so sweet. It would just... It would give you a headache, but it smelled so fucking good. In fact, you know what? I might start wearing that again. That's a good scent. European dick is just good. You don't feel guilty about it. You don't care if they call you the next day. It is what it is. Why is it that when you come home, you come stateside, and you're around that circumcised dong, and you just know you're just up all night scratching, itching whether or not they're going to call you. But meanwhile, you just had you know a romp in the hay behind the Parthenon, Parthenon with some man you didn't even know his name. All you know is that you smoked two cigarettes and had a gyro after it. You know what I mean? That's a beautiful thing. You had a Turkish kebab after you came out of a nightclub somewhere in Berlin. And that's a beautiful thing. And I'm glad that you saw our, our, our Lord and Savior, Beyonce. You know what I mean? As, as much as the Swifty girls are having the time of their lives, which I am going to try and see a, a Swift show. Uh, I'm hitting Beyonce. Queen Day. I don't know which shows I'm going to yet, but I'll pay top dollar. I want to see it because for me, that speaks to me. Um, I'm trying to have a Beyonce summer. I'm having a renaissance, okay? I am having a renaissance. I'll tell you why. Because all my friends said, you're not fun. You're not fun. I'm about to be so fucking fun. Y'all don't even know. You haven't even seen the amount of fun that I'm going to bring to the world. Because once I get through Radio City and I can kind of uh, take a breath, you know what I mean? I don't got a show till August 19th in Vegas. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And Vegas, you got to mentally prepare. You got to physically prepare. You know, and I'm, I'm going to need a couple of moments uh, this summer where I don't know where I am. You know, where I can't remember where I woke up. Just to prepare myself, my liver, my body, my emotional stability for Vegas. And I'm hoping to also see the Usher show in Vegas. Dude, if Usher's playing while I'm in Vegas, I will freak the fuck out. Because I'll tell you this right now. Usher grew up in a neighborhood right next to mine. And my girlfriend, Cammie, shout out to Cammie Miller, who owns Show Me Your Moo Moo. We used to go trick-or-treating in her neighborhood. And Usher lived there. And he would always pull up in his Jaguar, his uh, convertible Jaguar with his brother. And he'd always be like, because we're all around like the same age, right? He had just like started to make money. He would literally be like, love y'all's costumes. And then like skeet off. <laughs> I always remember being like, I sure thought we were cute. 
hell yeah. Like not a pervert, like just very nice. But Usher used to always be like, y'all look cool. And his little brother was always in the car. So I'm sure he was trying to like help his little brother out. But either way, my friends who have been to the Usher show in Vegas said all he does is fuck a stool for about an hour and a half. And that is the kind of summer I'm trying to have. I'm going to hit the Renaissance. I'm going to hit the Eras tour. I'm going to hit Usher fucking a stool. I'm going to maybe see Adele. You know what I mean? Um, set fire to the rain. That is the kind of vibe I'm going to be on. I may start vaping. I don't know. But all I need you to know is the summer of my Renaissance where y'all were like, you're an old lady. Oh, you threw out your back. Oh, you got acid reflux. Oh, you're having an eczema flare up. Heather never goes out anymore you don't even know what you see cut to just the song playing in the arms of the angels with a like rest in peace you know what I mean like in memoriam so anyways challenge accepted see y'all at the fucking club at the renaissance tour gang Gucci gang we'll see you then okay we got time for one more Hi, Heather. This is Landy from Chicago, and I'm calling with an absolute yes. Okay. Um, a friend of mine and I, like best friend, college, um, we chat basically constantly about dating and where we are in our life, and we constantly quote you of how did we get here? Hmm. We're not really sure. Both yeah. single at 35, yeah. both amazing. Like, honestly, we're both catches in our own way, and we just are – shocked that we're single but anyway that's not what I'm talking about she recently went on a date and was like I realized that I don't have a hobby like mm. I have no hobby like yeah. what do you talk about when you're on like a first date like what are you super passionate about what do you have a hobby about and of mm -hmm. course the guy she went on a date with is like literally a semi-professional like cyclist so he's got his own thing <sighs> which is exhausting. cool but like what do we have right she called me and I was like we have Heather McMahon like <laughs> The first thing that popped in my mind of, mm -hmm. like, what do I enjoy doing? What is my favorite pastime is listening to your podcast. I love that. It's listening to your Instagram stories. It's going to your shows. This is our pastime. I was like, and she said, she's like, people don't care what you're passionate about or what brings you happiness, just that something does. And we realized that it was you. You Ugh. are our current passion. I hope you're always our passion, but specifically right now in the life that we're in, in the season of life we're in, I should say, you are lifting us up in more ways than you know. And that's what we're now going to say. When some douchebag asks us on a first date, hey, what are your hobbies? I'm going to answer Me, bitch. with, I listen to Heather McMahon. Me, and bitch. you should too. Anyway, we love you so much. Thank you for being there for us always. Okay, Bye. well, now that I've officially come, that is just the sweetest thing that you could ever say. Listen, I love that. I love that. You know what I mean? You go out on a date, you ask these guys, hey, what's your hobby? Barstool? Barstool sports? Okay, great. What's your hobby? What, what's your oh, like hockey? Great. What's your hobby? Uh, female comedians who are bad bitches who also in the same podcast can be motivational, can be emotional, can be raw, can tell you how to, uh, I don't know, manage your business skills, can tell you to uh, <laughs> be the you today you want to be tomorrow. I love that. That's a beautiful thing. And I, I, I approve of this message. And I think that's great. I mean, Taylor Swift people, you know, uh, go nuts. They travel all over the country seeing her shows and doing the damn thing and, you know, trying to figure out the cryptic codes of all of her shows So or her songs. So, you know what? Um, maybe I'm going to start giving little, little uh, treats and little mystery things. And then y'all got to figure it out and solve them. You know what I mean? Maybe this is going to be like a, a game of Clue and you got to solve it. Because I already told you to guess what, I'm gonna, what my new hobby is that I'm going to start this summer which will be fun for everybody, you got to figure it out. DM me. When this comes out, DM me and let me know if you can figure out what I'm going to do. But that's great. I mean, here's the thing too. How many times do guys say, my hobby is Madden, Madden on um, N64. I don't even know if Madden's on N64. My hobby is Madden. I like Madden. Like, okay, great. And of course, I'm like, Steve Madden, stop. You're in his shoes? Yes. Although Jessica Simpson honestly fits me better. But I love that. I needed that too. And you know what? That reminds me. I, I, we didn't even plant this. This voicemail reminds me that I'm doing something right. I can be a hobby. And it's, it's inspiring my creative juices to bring y'all even more hot fire content this summer. 
I have a great idea of something that I want to do. And I think I'm just going to start rolling it out. Because, you know, the algorithm doesn't work anymore. Nobody knows. You put up a professionally edited video, it, it gets no likes. I put up a video of me eating a, a, a pub sub in my car. It goes completely viral. I don't know what works anymore. And I think I'm just going to get back to being me, being raw, being real. And maybe this summer we'll have some meetups. Like maybe let's just have like a, just a bar party. You know what I mean? Let's just go to a city and just have a, maybe before like the Renaissance concert. <gasps> Dude, this could be fun. Before one of the Renaissance shows, we have a big pregame and everyone blacks out. And then y'all have to carry me to the stadium. That could be fun. That would go viral. I love that. And I, I, I appreciate that. Just me as a hobby. You know what? Because what are my hobbies? 90 Day Fiance. Love that show. Uh, what other hobbies? Saving like different dishes on TikTok and Instagram that I will absolutely never attempt to make. Huge hobby of mine. I save it. It's like how to make smashed cucumbers with toasted sesame seeds and a miso glaze. I'm like saving it. Never going to do it. Never going to do it. I'm going to call Jeff and say, meet me at Macaroni Grill. I'm never going to do it. But um, I think this is exciting. And you know what? For the guys you go on dates with, and if you're like, this is the test. You go, well, one of my big hobbies is I really enjoy female comedians. And they're like, oh, like he. And you're like, Heather McMahon. And if they're like, honestly, I don't really like female comedians, then you already know it's done. I don't even care if they say they don't like me, but if they're like, I don't, I don't really follow a lot of female comedians, that means it's done. They're not going to be cool. And if you have a daughter one day, they're going to want her to do something like, I don't know, not fun. So... Just go ahead and say, it's not going to work out. I don't even care if they don't like me. You could be on a date with somebody and they're like, oh, Heather McMahon, yeah, I went to high school with her. Um, She sucked my dick once and had a lot of teeth. I, she hadn't even gotten her braces off. It was not good. Like, I don't even care. I'm not even mad at that guy because that probably happened. And I should send him an apology note. My bad, Chris. And anyways, I'm just saying, either way, if they're like, oh, I don't really watch a lot of female comedians. That's all you need to know. Then you just beep, 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 stop. Pause. Thank you so much for the Aperol spritzes. Oh my God. And then you just say, ah, oh my God, my ulcerative colitis is flaring up. I'm, I'm about to shit myself. But so nice to meet you, Trevor. And thank you for the drinks. And then you just run out. You just run out. You run out. Doesn't even have to be about me. But if you go on a date and you say, I love comedy, I love women's comedy. And then these guys say, I don't really follow anybody or I'm not really into chicks who are funny. Then just say, go fuck yourself and say, Cardi B for Prez, suck my dick. And then walk out. But definitely tell them that you have ulcerative colitis too so they feel bad for you. Anyways, that's my that's my advice. And um, I love that we're in this together. I love that this is going to be the summer of fun, the summer of letting loose, the summer of drugs safely. You know what I mean? No fentanyl. The summer of my new hobby that's going to be a surprise. But if you do have a son or daughter doing a bar or bat mitzvah, give me like three months and I will be ready to perform. Um, this will be the summer of learning how to rollerblade again. This will be the summer of doing Pilates and getting a core. And the summer of just staying in my lane and living my truth. Because what? Don't compare yourself to anybody else. Because guess what? Everybody has diarrhea. Everybody is an off day. And everyone's sweating and panicking just as much as you are. I'll see you guys at Radio City, and I'll see you this summer. Love you, mean it. Arrivederci, ciao, Bella. Bye.